How's everybody? Well, the first thing I'd like to say is our thoughts and prayers are out to all the people affected by, you know, Hurricane Michael today, and I would encourage, um, we haven't had time to get it organized, but I would encourage everyone out there to, you know, help and support the people, uh, the folks that are affected. Um, you know, it's a difficult situation to go through. We've been through a couple of them, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that could use a lot of support and help right now. You know, our players have worked hard this week to try to improve. Um, you know, I've been encouraged by, you know, the effort that we've tried to practice with. Uh, this is a, a very good team that we're playing. Uh, presents, you know, lots of issues both sides of the ball in terms of the stunting and movements that they do up front on defense and, you know, the multiples personnel-wise they, they give you on offense. And uh, they've got some very good players. and. You know, we're going to have to do everything we can to affect, you know, the quarterback and uh, not allow him to have uh, the kind of day. This team could be very easily be 5-0. and um, And, uh, you know, so this will be a challenging game for us. Um, but our players are, you know, trying to do things the right way so that we can get better as a team and uh, get some of the things that um, obviously you know, we need to work on to get better uh, and try to solve some of the issues that are created by, you know, missing missing persons, you know, out there. Uh, the two guys that I know you'll ask about is Tua has taken every rep in practice. Um, he does have a sprained knee. Um, we did put a brace on him just to kind of protect him. But he's been able to do all, all the work, you know, in practice, so that's not an issue. Lester Cotton sprained his ankle. It's a mild ankle sprain. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to get back to practice tomorrow uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. So, um, you know, I mentioned this on Monday that, you know, homecoming is a special time for a lot of people, a lot of alumni, a lot of people come back and renew old acquaintances and associations and memories from, you know, their times here. And uh, a lot of those things are um, very special to them. And, uh, we always like to make Saturday a special day as well uh, in terms of how we play and what we do. But the challenge is going to be for our players. It's not about um, playing at home. Uh, that's great. The spirit is great. The enthusiasm is beneficial. But it's how the players play in the game that's going to make the difference in the game. So uh, we need to focus on that. Coach, we'll start up here with Charlie on the right. Sticking with injuries, do you have a timetable for how long the Trayvon will be out with his injury? Uh, you know, uh, I, it's going to be an extended period of time. Um, what he has is going to take a while. I, I would be surprised if he'll be able to come back by the end of the season. Coach, we'll go on this left side with Michael. Or no, Stephen's fine. We can go there now. What have you seen from uh, Nigel Knott in practice this week? And just since he's been here, I know he, had, I know he had the knee injury when he first came in, but it seems a lot healthier now. What have you seen from Nigel not? Well, Nigel's working hard, and I think, you know, he sees, you know, there may be some opportunity for him to play, and uh, he's working hard and um, makes some good plays out there. You know, he's gotten a little bigger and a little stronger, and I think that's benefited him tremendously. I think he has a little more confidence in uh, knowing what to do now and how to do it. So, um He's certainly one of the guys that needs to step up for us. Coach, we'll stay here in the middle with Michael. It's on that topic, how overall have you seen that secondary adjust without Trayvon out there this week? Well, you know, it's different guys. I mean, we lost six guys last year to graduation. We got three guys that were in the two deep that aren't there anymore. Um, so, you know, that's nine guys. So I don't, you know, we only have so many guys. So do the best we can with what we got and we got to work to get a lot of guys better and it's very challenging for us and we're looking forward to the challenge and um, just kind of have to go from there but we got some guys that have an opportunity and hopefully they look at the opportunity in a positive way and uh, do things that they need to do to be able to contribute to the team I know they all want to do that so uh, we're going to do everything we can to help them We've seen some more physicality from Henry Ruggs with some broken tackles and blocks. Have you noticed that yourself? And what have you seen from him? Well, he's always been, um, you know, a physical player. He's very explosive, strong. Uh, he's tough. Uh, he's got some power, um, which I think sometimes, you know, you look at guys physically and don't necessarily believe that. But, you know, he kind of has always had those qualities. And I think because he's playing with more confidence now, they're, they're showing up even more than ever before. But... Um, 
I, I've been impressed with the way he's tried to block. Um, run after catch has been good, uh, and he runs hard, and he's physical. How do you assess the uh, uh, coverage of the linebackers, and uh, how has it worked with with the secondary? And what do you anticipate, you know, with the changes in the secondary? How that whole thing? Well, it's not going to affect the linebackers. You know, everybody got a job to do. I mean, we're changing personnel. We're not changing the whole system, and nobody has to do anything different because one person's not going to be there. All right, somebody's going to take his place, and that guy's going to have to do his job. But you know, pass defense is everybody. You know, it's the guys rushing. Uh, it's the guys that play underneath coverage. Uh, it's the guys that have to cover backs man-to-man -man that don't cover man-to-man. -man. Um, you know, so everybody needs to get better at what they do. And, uh, you know, that includes the linebackers and includes the secondary and it, and it includes, you know, the guys up front. So, um, you know, it's the same way stopping the run. It's not just the defensive line. It's the linebackers fitting the plays right. It's the secondary supporting correctly. Uh, and we're not doing enough of those things consistently enough correctly uh, to be able to play the way we'd like to play. Are we capable? Absolutely. Um, we just got, and most of the things that we make mistakes on are fixable, but we got to get them fixed. Uh, I was going to ask you to look back a few years. I remember, I remember, I know in your first couple years at Michigan State when you guys played Nebraska, uh, just what was it like to play against such a dominant team at that point? Well, um, I had been in the NFL for a few years, so you know I kind of forgot exactly what college football was like. And my first game at Michigan State was against Nebraska, who was a national championship team, and they beat us like 55 to 14. And um, I was pretty discouraged, and I thought walking out to shake hands with Tom Osborne, I said, "We'll never win a game." It might take three years all right, for us to win a game. If everybody in college football was as good as these guys. And, you know, I'd never forget when I shook hands with Coach Osborne, he put his arm around me and he said, you're not as bad as you think you are. So I think he knew how good his team was. <laughs> but we did go 6-6 six and six that year, so we, won. we did win a few games. All right, thanks.